right. So let's do this. Um, before we start, I, I would like to just give a word to everybody at Decoded, everybody that organized Decoded. Um, I think this is the first version of the event, which is available physically, and not only physically in one location, but what, four to five location, and this, this is not a small achievement. Um, so yeah, this is me. Um, I'm Elliot, CTO of Nodal. Nodal is the 11th paradigm of Polkadot, but more on that later. Um, and I believe our vision is to bring Web3 to the real world. So let me tell you how we are going to do that. Um, but before I do, I think there's a big question. When you want to bring anything to the real world, you first have to define it. So what is Web3 anyways? Right? I'm sure that if I took 10 people in this room and I would ask them this question, they would not give me the same reply. And I want to solve this before I bring it to the real world. So if you check what Web3 is online, you are going to come up with a very famous definition from some Twitter profile, I think. Um, and we are told that Web1 was about reading data. And it was translated to this kind of website which, by the way, is still online today. This is a screenshot from a month ago. Um, then we are told that Web2 is about writing data, not just reading it. And it gives us social media, namely. It gives us Twitter, which is here. And we are then told that Web3 is about owning your data, owning your profile, owning your finances, yada, 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 yada. Um, this definition is great, right? It, it kind of highlights the big lines. But I believe it's missing, it's just missing way too much. Uh, so here is the definition I'm trying to use and which I'll be using for this talk, uh, which is that I believe Web3 is not just about reading, writing, owning data, right? It's about, it's an ideology. It's a paradigm shift. And in many ways, you can think of it as a new wind. It's a change and it's a movement. That's really what it is. It's, it's a community. Uh, and it's all about what? It's about empowering people. It's about empowering teams to manage their finances that are yes, but not just that. You can actually be self-sovereign. You can have freedom of which platform you want, to, you want to use, which financial apps you want to use. How do you manage your data, your identity? And I think this is more powerful than reads right on. Um, what's amazing though with Web3 is that we've been building this for what? 10 years now? And honestly, all of those promises, they're already here, right? I, I'm not coming here today and saying, hey, Web3 is not yet what it should be. I think it is what it should be. Uh, however, it is still restricted to us in this room, which are rather technically minded, uh, which probably had bitten a few bullets to learn how to use platform X, Y, or Z. Um, and if we really want, really, really want to bring all our innovation, our amazing work and amazing products to real world people, right? The people in the street, the people in our cities that actually go, I don't know, teach people, uh, students, people in, in a supermarket, or people just in other types of companies. Well, what we really need to do is that we need to bring them real-world use cases. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is a use case that you can use in your daily life, right? A NFT and a crypto punk or a crypto kitty, I'm not using that in my daily life as much as I love it. Um, and right now, I believe this is the main issue we are facing. So how do we build apps that people that are not in this room will want to use? Well. Now that I've kind of hyped everyone up, uh, I've got a tough question to, say, to, to answer, which is, hey, how does this apply to Nodal? Well, I'm not going to come and tell you that Nodal is a solution to everything. But I'm going to come and tell you that Nodal, and Nodal, we are thinking about that very carefully, and we think we can be one part of the solution. We can help other teams, other builders, actually build real-world use cases for their apps. Let me tell you why. Um, Nodal essentially, if I can switch to, oh, here we go. Nodal essentially started as more of a mobile powered infrastructure. It sounds very nerdy, right? So it's kind of in contradiction with what I've just been saying. Uh, and we built an app that's very simple, that people can install in a few seconds. And so far, we were able to get up to almost half a million wallet users on our chain. This is second to only Polkadot in the ecosystem. And 
we were able to reach this number because our solution is very easy to use as much as it doesn't tell you much right, with this screenshot. And this is normal. This is normal because, to be frank, we can't just realize it now that we have a unique power and we are uniquely positioned to help build the infrastructure that will bring web free apps to real world use cases. And this translated to this, this translated to a network of phones all over the world that is truly global. If you look at every single splash of color on this map, this is actually a location where a nodal user was or a nodal enabled device was, right? And this was taken, I believe, one or two years ago. So if we are going to generate this image again, it would be even better. Um, and now, yeah, guys, I've showed you a great network. How, how does this translate back to, to, my, to my main topic, which is, hey, let's bring WebFruit to the real world? Well, this is exactly where we are sitting at currently. We've built a global network, and we are now building real-world use cases for it. We've built all the nerdy stuff, right? And, and it works, and we've had our dream, but now we want to be a vector of change for our ecosystem. And these are some of the things we are currently building, which we believe will allow builders, us, you, and newcomers in the ecosystem to build real-world apps. It might sound a bit nerdy, uh, but typically we have asset tracking. Asset tracking is a problem that impacts all of us. If you have an air tag, you are doing asset tracking. But you are doing asset tracking by working and um, supporting companies like Apple and Google, which are not exactly the most decentralized or the most privacy-minded in many cases. Um, and this is essentially what we've been focusing on. But then we started looking at what we could do with, with this network. And we realized that we could do many more use cases, many more building blocks for the apps of the future, which would be private social interactions, which is one of my favorites. We have proving your participation or attendance in an event, which then opens many other apps, which I'm actually going to tell you about soon. Uh, proof of origin, which would allow you to verify the pictures and articles you read online um, so that when journalists present news, uh, you, actually, you would actually have a proof that the news and pictures you're actually seeing are actually authenticated, right? This will fight fake news, which some countries are very fan of, but don't want to get too, too political here. Uh, and we have, yeah, a bunch of other very nerdy use cases. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead, um, and I'm actually going to show you some of those. Because our goal is that we don't want to be the only ones to use this infrastructure. It's cool, it works. We believe if we were the only ones to keep this permission access to our infrastructure, we believe this would just not be good enough. We believe this would actually be restricting ourselves. And so we would like to make it programmable. Um, and this is why I'm here today, right? The goal is to show you what we're going to build, what we're going to bring you to all of you as builders and various projects. Um, and some, for example, will be proof location, which we saw two slides ago. Proof location will allow you to prove the location of your users or wallet holders in a cryptographic and privacy-first manner. Okay, sounds cool, but now you, you might be telling me, well, what can I do with proof location, right? Well, this is how you build, for instance, a proof origin. If I take a picture and I can prove that I was at the location where the picture was taken, technically I have just proven that my picture is authentic. And to me, this sounds like an actual real-world use case. How many of you are browsing Twitter and trying to distinguish between fake and real news, right? Especially, let's say, a month or two ago, in the crypto sphere, when markets are not doing so well, you are starting to have news here and there. Or with geopolitical events, you are starting to see pictures of X, Y, or the event. But how do you make sure that those are pictures, those are the pictures that you are told they are, right? Um, a few other things, a bit more nerdy, a bit like some ideas for you as builders and other projects in the, in the, in the room. Uh, think of geographic airdrops, think of governance, think of universal basic income for local citizens. Um, yesterday, we had Encounter on stage, which was showcasing a universal basic income for local communities. Well, proof location will allow that to do that at scale, right? Just being in one city could actually give you a few tokens to spend in this local community. And so this is one of the use cases that's going to arrive first before any other part of the stack to builders, developers, projects, everyone. 
And the next one, which I actually showcased a little at, in, in Amsterdam, was proof of participation. Well, we kind of refactored this concept. Um, and proof of participation, think of it as a derivative of proving your location. Proving your participation means that all of you in this room could potentially prove that you participated to Polkadot Decoded. OK, too nerdy, right? Uh, let, me, let me bring you another use case based on Decoded. What if you actually had the choice to vote, rate, select the next talk right after this one? Or what if you could choose the program of tomorrow? This is essentially what Parity did, but months in advance by preparing the code. We all voted on this talk, and by the way, thank you for voting for this one. Uh, but what if we could actually enable our conference participants, the ones that are actually in this room, the ones that are watching the presentation, the ones that are streaming it online, to then decide on the program? And this is only one of the use cases I can think of for proof of participation. And this is something I'm truly excited to continue research and bring to the nodal stack. Uh, and speaking of the nodal stack, well, here is our proposal to you, right? Which is, hey, we have these protocols. They are going to be building blocks. We are not necessarily building real-world apps here. We are building tools and legal blocks that you can then use and assemble within your existing apps to then bring real-world use cases. And we believe this can be a Trojan horse. I, I like this word. A Trojan horse for adoption. Because if we, as a community, can deliver an app that normal, non-nerdy, non-technical people use, ideally with the protocols I kind of mentioned, or maybe not, then this is how we reach adoption. Um, as a reminder, this is all built on Polkadot. We are the 11th part of, of Polkadot. Details, details. But what really matters is that our goal is to bring all those protocols, all those use cases, all the nodal stack, right, really, to any parachain on Polkadot. And it will be available from day one. As soon as it is available to us, it will be available to you. This is going to be it for me. Uh, we might have a few questions. And uh, yeah, thank you for uh, coming to my TED Talk, I guess. Wonderful, Elliot. There is only one quite well, actually, technically two. Never mind. So, what is next for Nodal then? For? For Nodal. Well, this is this presentation, you, 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 right? You literally <laughs> just presented it, but they, like, what, what's, what's exactly. first? So, what's first is proving location. Yeah. This is an extension to asset tracking, which we do today with corporate customers with proof of concepts, actual customers, insurance companies. And we want to uh, just generalize this application to builders. We want to allow anyone to prove the location of a device or maybe find the location of a device. Wonderful. And where can people learn more about what Nodal is doing? If we Put go back, back one slide. slide, that was my Twitter. Uh, I believe the Nodal <laughs> they, Twitter they is, ask the is questions, linked as well. Obviously. We um, work. Yeah. yeah, so you can go on Nodal Network on Twitter and ODLE and then Network. Keep it simple. Amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so Emily. much, Elliot. Sounds good. Thank you.